I'm gonna do a quick video on the SX4. Um, I've shot it a few times now, and um, the first couple times it was kind of jamming up when it came new, um, and now I think it's kind of broken in, and I'm not getting that issue anymore. I went shooting this morning in negative 16 with snow and ice, and um, the gun never froze up once, and I was able to shoot really fast cycling, so um, cycling rounds through it. So, taking it apart, I'm going to go really fast through this. I'm not going to make this a long video. Get the cap. Uh, barrel. Just, um, I don't know what you call this. Nobody knows what it's called. <laughs> Spring. And then maybe hammer. Pop that guy out. There we go. And then here's a trick that is probably not recommended, but you can use the end of this guy. The inside of it here you can see at the end um, I don't even know what you call the piece but um, this guy has to be able to go back in and fit into that slot going down and that's probably one of the most difficult parts the second most difficult part is um, fitting back on the first few times it's kind of difficult fitting back on um, the barrel um, so I'll show you kind of tricks of what might help put it back on so you're not scratching anything. And I got a uh, code black goose and it's a 5345 five, Invictor Plus Winchester SX3 and SX4. Um, this guy's sweet. I think this is about a hundred dollars. It came with my gun, so it made the gun actually a pretty good deal. Um, I picked it up at Shields as a used gun, but I think it was pretty much brand new. It didn't look like it ever had round shot through it. Um, there's like no wear on it at the time. There's already wear on it just from the cleaning it. So I'm going to start with the cleaning now. So after shooting a few rounds, your dirtiest part will be this guy. So cleaning that, I'll spray it down. Um, a lot of guys will just soak it, soak it in a in a bowl. I don't really have a good bowl to do that with at the moment. Um, I need some kind of piece, cheap plastic Tupperware. Get that guy out. So cleaning. I'm gonna just do a quick cleaning. I'm not doing any special cleaning with this. Um, I'm trying to do it pretty quickly here. So we got. So we'll start with the gun. I'm gonna use, I got a lubricant clean cleaner and then the um, single purpose firearm cleaner. Um, so I'll go through with this first. I don't wanna get this all over everything either. I could tell just after oiling really lightly with this uh, lubricating cleaner protector, um, this thing shot way better today after. And this would be the, I think the second, third time me cleaning it. I even cleaned it when I got brand new. 
um, but I just started using this and that synthetic gun oil made a big difference, not one single jam. Part of that's the gun breaking in as well. So I'm just kind of rubbing through this stuff. I'm gonna release this guy. And you can get in here and go a lot tighter with the brush and um, Q-tips and stuff, but I just cleaned this literally yesterday, shot this morning, and I will be shooting the bacon tomorrow. So, and uh, I've been using three inch, um, not even really expensive ammo. Um, what was I using? I don't know, you're, you're 20, $22 ammo for geese and duck. A um, couple different, I think some Winchester and um, uh, what are, what's the blue box? Federal, some federal stuff. And um, I have shot a few blackout through it and stuff and I've had a jam on blackout, so. Um, beforehand, but that could have been the gun just breaking in again, so. so. I notice if you do let that cleaner sit on there a little bit, it does kind of help break things down a little bit better, but um, get all the carbon off of there. You can see what comes off. And this guy probably should get start cleaning first. So you let that soak a little bit on there. It's gonna help break it up. And it's better to use a brush on that guy. Yeah, it is important with these semi-autos to uh, keep them really clean. You're, you do not want to even, I would say, shoot it once without cleaning again. Because um, you will start to have problems with the jamming the second you have a little bit of grime in there. But as long as you clean it and oil it and go out and shoot it. If you weren't having issues with the cycling before, you probably wouldn't, wouldn't then. So... I'm gonna spray the oil into the gun after doing this. I felt like that worked really well. And so I, you know, I put a little bit of oil in here. This is the only area on the trigger beforehand because it might be a little bit hard to get in. Um, and the synthetic stuff's kind of nice because it dries. All right. Now this guy. Use my snake. I love the squeegees. I don't, I don't bother with using, you know, I got that whole thing right there and I don't bother pulling it out usually. These things are as good as long as these cheap strings don't break on them. And that thing looks really clean, so that's good. Now it's just important to clean this area. I already sprayed it once. The problem with spraying a lot of this on the outside is it will be easier to take the paint, I think, that way, but um, I don't care too much about that. It's going to wear off either way. Rubbing it up on stuff. If you're hunting with it, you're going to scratch it. 
that's how dirty this guy gets. So it's important to get this it's where the air blows out of the port. This part gets probably the dirtiest too because it's kind of where it explodes out of the, of the piston, what do we call it? So when the air goes through here, it kind of pressurizes on the springs and that's what kind of loads it. It goes back and has the caulking action when it pressurizes with air, and then the gas blows back kind of through these ports right here, which ends up right in this section. So that's where your dirtiest air goes through, or exhaust goes through. Let me open this up real quick. And if I soak this, it'd get a lot cleaner, but I don't think it's too much of an issue. Um, I just generally try to get in there as best as I can. Um, once in a while, I will definitely do that, but I need to get a little container that's good for that. I think I only have some glassware at the moment, which I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. Okay. Let's leave this guy. So this area I think is really important to actually polish because it's where it gets grimy and stuck and this is not able to slide on here really well. That's where it's not going to cycle around um, well. It's on there this time. Normally that comes off a little easier. that if I brought out the copper brush or whatever it is um, it's gonna work a little bit better the brass but that's pretty good it's still smooth getting those the carbon out of the walking what do you call it the walking nut I don't know hold everything back together all right so we're gonna start with the trigger. Kind of the butt of it in first. Oh, this guy likes to slide out, I forget. You gotta hold it closed typically. It has a little bit of pressure on it that wants to keep the thing open. go to the bolt. It's easy to wipe all of the cleaner onto the outside of the gun, which you can clean later. I am going to spray just a little bit of this in now. And you'll see your wear lines where the metal rides, and those are probably the most important areas to make sure they're oiled well, because those are the areas that it is breaking in. When you say breaking in a gun, those are the areas that might have a little bit of coating on them that needs to wear off. Um, and I found that when I oiled the rail, it was just really smooth. 
So it's just finding the right oil that balances well. And that's probably hard to do if you're in really cold conditions. Um, all right, so next, the bolt. That's right. <clears throat> Two pieces. There we go. Uh, so this is the back. This is the front for the pin. So it goes like that. And I found with this guy, because it has this motion, this is what it does, it's designed to do that. This motion needs to be really smooth. Now it's really smooth. Before it kind of gets stuck a little bit more. So it definitely had a breaking in period and now it's doing good. The hardest part for me has been this. So you put it in here and you have to have it kind of at the right angle. It doesn't like, this is a, a really good tip. It likes to be in this position, not in this position. So if you can hold it like that, it goes in smoother. And then you really have to eyeball where, where the hole is down here. And it's probably best if you do it like this and you can kind of hold it and feed it in. And then when you press this button, the release, That's how you know. And then I honestly have to look with light shining down there to make sure I got it right. Hold on one sec. Far and it closes just fine. It does get a little bit, it's tight to pull it back, but um, a little bit tighter. I'm actually gonna use a little bit more. I wiped most of that out. You do this a few times, I feel like you really have it where it needs to be. And I can wipe a little bit up. So, yeah. But yeah, I'm happy with the gun. It's great. <laughs>